This project is inspired by the story of the loneliest plant on earth, the Encephalitis woodi, and draws attention to plants unable to survive in the wild. Isolated from their habitat, these extinct in the wild plants are no longer reproductive members of their population. They are the living dead. Cycads are the oldest surviving seed plants that appeared before the age of dinosaurs around 300 million years ago. In spite of their incredibly long legacy, cycads are now the most endangered living organisms on Earth. In 1895, a single male tree was discovered in the Nagoya forest in South Africa by John Medley Wood. No other specimen could be found, and though several expeditions have since explored the forest, this lonely male remained the last of his wild ancestors. It was feared that this plant would be destroyed, so it was removed and propagated in botanical gardens. All existing specimens are clones of this plant and all are males. Our first asked. How can remote sensing technology be used to access previously inaccessible parts of the Nagoya Forest? We equipped a drone with a multispectral camera and programmed it to fly in a grid over two selected areas, each around 40 acres collecting a total of 4,000 images. Flying 80 metres above the ground, we could capture images with a ground resolution of 8.5 centimetres. The multispectral camera takes five photos, one for each wavelength band, red, blue, green, visible to the human eye, and additionally red edge and near-infrared, which can only be seen using false colours to the final image. A natural colour composite closely resembles the colours as we normally see them. When applying false colours to the red edge band, we can see vegetation actively photosynthesizing. And this can also provide information about dying vegetation, like this blue tree which is dyed with its bare branches showing through. The near-infrared band provides powerful ways to classify healthy vegetation. The 523 band discriminates between dead tree, roads and geology types. Moreover, it can be used to discriminate between different plant materials and be used to distinguish different tree species. In addition to using colours, we are also searching for different structures and viewed from above, the cycad would have a palm-like structure to its canopy. Together, the drone missions and aerial flights provided a wealth of photos that were each combined by stitching these together to form a map that could be analysed. This is the first time these methods have been used to search for the Encephalitis woodi, and it's hoped that it will more easily spot a cycad in the forest. And while this search continues, the story of the enigmatic Encephalitis woodi and the elusive female, its discovery and subsequent disappearance from nature, reminds us just how easy it is to lose a species and lose biodiversity.